Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're back or if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much for clicking. Thank you so much for coming through for me with this video. Today I'm coming to you with another video concerning bath and delivery. And this is about how to take care of your perennial cut or your perennial tear after you've given out to your baby. Now, you have had your labor pains, you have you've gone to the delivery room, you've had your baby, you have been stitched up if you had a perennial cut or if you don't know what a perennial cut is or a perennial tear, it is that tearing you get when you're pushing a baby out or they need to cut it so that your baby can come out. That is what it means and I'm just here to share with you guys the most simple way of how you can take care of a perennial cut to heal faster. I know you've heard of stories, if you, especially if you're a first time mom, you've heard of people telling you, oh, you need to sit on a basin, which is funny because when I was coming out of hospital after giving birth to my second baby, I can't imagine the nurse told me that, you know what, now you need to go home, put on some water on the basin and sit on it. I'm like, what are you saying? I can't even open my legs and you want me to sit on a basin. How does that even work? <laughs> You know, um, so I'm here to share with you what I did seven years ago when I had my first baby and the advice that I was given by the doctor then is what I used when I have, when I had my second baby and it worked for wonders for me and it was painless and it was effective. So if you want to see how that went by, please stick around and let me share with you guys. So yeah, you have heard stories of people telling you once you get out of the hospital after you had your baby, you need to sit on a basin and like, you know. Uh, so that you can heal girl how do you even open your legs to sit on a basin <laughs> the number one thing that you should do when it comes to your perennial cut number one take your medicine you'll be prescribed medicine by the doctor they will give you medicine probably before you leave the hospital this depends on the kind of hospital you deliver in not all hospitals give you medicine especially public hospitals i don't know if nowadays they do but when i gave back to my baby seven years ago i was not given any type of painkillers i was just told go home and do this and that which is what I want to share with you so what I was told when I gave birth to my baby seven years ago the nurse told us do not sit on a basin and she repeatedly said that to uh, said that to us all the women who had delivered that day and she said do not sit on a basin so number one take your medicines for the pain because the pain is intense labor pain aside this is another one when the anesthesia anesthesia wears off <laughs> You're going to call all the angels, okay? And they always tell you to sit upright, which is not the most pleasant thing to do. But you have to take your courage because you have to breastfeed your baby. And you cannot breastfeed your baby while you're lying down. So you have to sit, which is not pleasant, darling. I'm not here to scare anyone, but I'm going. To, I'm giving you a heads up. So take your medicine. That's the first thing to do. Number two, wear less aggressive pads. Like, uh, you know, like the way... Um, let me use an example of always because that's what I normally use. You know the way always, the way the, the fabric part of always is on top. It's like a meshy kind of uh, fabric on top of it. You really want to avoid that kind of fabric at that moment because it might graze that area and it is not pleasant at all. Uh, also, you are usually very, very sensitive. So don't wear that part of, uh, that kind of pad. So you want to use like cotton wools or you want to use like pads that have that cotton wool kind of effect or if you don't have like cotton wools um if you don't have any other type of pad take your pad and then put cotton wool on top and then wear it so that you don't graze okay so that's another thing and also if you want to um be comfortable in sitting this is something that i i, I realized when i had my 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 recent baby who is now five months if you want to be comfortable sitting you know these brief pants i wish i had them the brief pants the pants the maternity pants take that pant and then take a chunk of cotton wool, okay a chunk of cotton wool straighten it up and put it on top of the brief and then wear it it will be so comfortable if you've not tried this try it it will be so comfortable for you to sit down because now the the brief will not like enter in in between the center because now you have the cotton wool should cover like the center and the sides so should be big enough to cover that area so use like a cotton wool on top of your pad so that it gives you a very uh, comfortable way to sit okay number three do not use soap at all all these people who go you need to wash your area with soap please stop it don't wash that area with soap especially after you've given bath it's crazy it's going to to, to give you a very uncomfortable sensation do not use soap because your wounds are you know very light and very you know sensitive so don't use soap number four 
or the second last thing use saline water use water that has salt okay put salt in hot water put salt in like a bucket and then stand on the bucket it's like you're steaming stand on the bucket so that the steam gets you know underneath I know you might be bleeding and everything but it's just you and in the bathroom just stand on the bucket and just steam that area okay with water that has salt do not sit on the basin again <laughs> anyway if you have sat on the basin and it worked for you please comment down below and let us know how you did that uh, but for me i was just scared of sitting down because i felt like if i sit down <laughs> my threads are just going to tear and i was not ready for that so just use hot water with salt and just stand on it and then just steam that area okay that is the most another effective way of uh, taking care of your perennial tear number five and the last tip and that is the best tip and this is the one tip that is going to heal you and make you heal faster use like a cloth a piece of cloth or like uh, a face towel that is really 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 soft that has a very very soft fabric put it in the hot water and it's going to burn your hands just uh, play with around with the temperatures put it in the hot water squeeze a little bit and then just put it underneath and just hold it okay hold it for some time uh, the water must have salt kindly please please put just just put salt nothing else just hold it all these stories that we hear on the internet of, of, of how people on the other side of the world uh, treat their peroneal tear is not common here in Kenya or in Africa of using cubes and I don't know and I don't know ice cubes and I don't know to ease the pain mm -hmm. if you want to ease that pain the best thing you can do is anytime you feel like that pain is intense especially after you've taken your painkillers because the painkillers do not last you an entire two weeks because most of the time the perennial tear uh, pain subsides down by the time you are two weeks gone so take your piece of cloth with hot water water that has salt and just put it underneath your uh underneath your just put it underneath yes on your vagina just like press it lightly there it's like you're kind of like we call it kuchoma it's like you're massaging but very very lightly just massage lightly 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 and let the water get in there with that hotness personally i used to use very very hot water and it really really worked so do not sit on a basin but i've seen that people have invented um this basin that has like spritz um things on it and then you put it on the toilet with some water i don't know they sell it at 1500 but i do not see the need of buying that especially if what if i don't give back to another baby where am i going to take it so just use <laughs> water and a piece of cloth and trust me trust me it's going to work just be careful that you even go deeper just open your legs open your legs apart and just use that cloth and just press it that's what i used to do that is what i did seven years ago that is what i did the other time and my perennial tear healed perfectly and it healed like after within a month or after two weeks the pain had reduced the stitches had come off it was just a good in a good place i could sit comfortably i could breastfeed comfortably i could walk well but within a month i was healed completely because even after two weeks i continued massaging massaging but sitting on a basin was not an option for me so yeah that's just basically everything you need to do when it comes to your perennial tear if you have any other ideas down there below any experiences that somebody else can use that is economical and affordable please comment down below let us educate each other let us know how to do this and yeah you're going to love your experience with your new baby it's going to be crazy so be prepared for that i'm going to talk about more more and more stuff if you have something you'd like for me to talk about uh if you're an expectant mom or if you're a new mom and there's something that you really want to know about please comment down below let me know and i'm going to give my thoughts on it all these things that i've shared in this video are my personal experiences they're not like the rules to go so you can choose whatever you want to do it's all up to you and i'll see you guys in another video and for that bye bye